Right. We'll have light. Okay, the latter part of Hosea 6 3 says, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter rain, the latter and the former rain unto the earth. In day one, let us review how he came in the rain, as the former rain. Acts 2, verses 1 through 4, my next reader, please. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there was a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were filled with the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. All right. Now let us take note that after this point, Israel began to return to Elohim in droves. Mm -hmm. You remember that kind of, of the scripture? After, mm -hmm. af, after this point, after the Ruach HaKodesh fell upon them during the day of Pentecost, even that day, 3,000 got saved. Yes. Mm -hmm. And from that day forward, they just kept on coming in. Mm -hmm. See, this was that great repentance, that national repentance. Mm -hmm. This was the former reign. We still await the latter reign. Mm -hmm. But when the latter rain comes, it's going to be just as awesome. Hallelujah. It's going to be just as awesome. We're going to be doing excerpts just as powerful as they did. Yeah. We'll usher in another national repentance. Amen. 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 They'll be coming in in droves. Hallelujah. They'll be accepting the Messiah in droves. Hallelujah. We'll be banking money in our heavenly bank account. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what we live for. Amen. 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 It's coming, y'all. It's coming. Right now, he's just reviving us. He's just waking us up. As Ezekiel 37 teaches, he's, he, he's taking those dead bones, they're rising, and he's putting the flesh back on them. Well, in verses 1 through 3, we have the saints doing the work of the kingdom. That is calling Israel and the Gentiles to repentance and encouraging them that Yah will raise them up in the third day. See, this is the same thing that we have to encourage the people now today. That our Elohim is an awesome male yeah. and that he will raise us up in the third day. Yeah. Those who are faithful to him, he will be faithful to us. Yeah. Yeah. We're to likewise do the work of the kingdom. We're to call Israel and the Gentiles to repentance. Hallelujah. All peoples, all nations, whomsoever will. Let them come. The spirit of the bride says, come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, come. Here in verses 4 through 11, we have a response of Yah to this national repentance. He gives us an account of his actions that he'll do during, um, during when this national repentance takes place. Yes. Hosea 6, 4 through 6. My next reader, please. Hallelujah. O Ephraim, what shall I do unto thee, O Judah? What shall I do unto thee? For your goodness is as a morning cloud, and as the early dew it goeth away. Therefore I have therefore have I hewed them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth, and thy judgments are as a light that goeth forth. For I desire mercy and not sacrifice and the knowledge of Elohim more than burnt offerings. Okay, now one has, has to recognize this, uh, that these two things were, are the two things that Yah said were missing from out the land. He said knowledge of mercy wasn't in the land. They were missing out of the land. And it's imperative that one understand that the type of burnt offering or sacrifice that Yah wants is the type that causes one to show kindness to those who are not worthy of it. Yeah. You know, it's nothing if you be nice to those who are nice to you. Yeah. Even the wicked does that. Amen. 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 See, but we have to be nice to the ones who aren't so nice to us. Mm -hmm. You know, as, as Brother Joe was uh, alluding to earlier, we have to 
present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Yeah. Making them holy and acceptable unto Yah. Yeah. You know, we do this by having mercy, by showing mercy to those who are not merciful. Showing mercy and kindness to those who don't deserve our mercy and kindness. Yes. See, we do this by becoming knowledgeable of Elohim. How do we become knowledgeable of Elohim? The scriptures teaches us that, that he or she who loves instruction loves knowledge. So when we learn to love the instruction of Elohim, then we also become knowledgeable of Elohim. If you want to get to know Elohim, then all you got to do is go see Elohim. You know, I ask people all the time, when the last time you've seen Elohim? And don't you know that a lot of people have not seen Elohim in quite a while? <laughs> and I teach them how they can see Elohim. I say, go to John 1 and 1. In the beginning, the word was the word. The word, the word was with Elohim. The word was Elohim. If the word is Elohim, you can see him anytime you want, as long as you have a copy of his word. Amen? Amen. Amen. All you got to do is open it up and spend some time with him. Get to know him. Right. Love his instruction. Because there's plenty of instruction in his word. Yes. And when you love his instruction, you'll be loving knowledge of Elohim. That's how you get to know Elohim. You know, I always hear people talk about, oh, how good a, you know, they, they hear a good lesson and they say, oh, man, that was, oh, that was a great meal. That was a great spiritual meal. That was, that was a feast. You know, awesome. Yes. <laughs> See, but I'm just a cook. I just prepared it. You got to eat it. Yes. You have to eat it. And you can't eat it without doing it. The Messiah said the meat that he does is the will of his father and to, and to finish the task that he had given him. So likewise, our meat is, is the same thing. Our meat or food is when we do the will of Elohim mm -hmm. and we finish the task that he's given us. This is what we're called to do. Now, if you look at your bodies as a type of land, because they are a type of land, amen? amen. Because we're made from what? The dust of the earth, yes, yes. which is the land, amen? Yes. Now, the problem that Yah had with the land of Israel was that there was no mercy or knowledge in the land. Yes. Do you have any mercy in the land mm. that he's given you? Do you have any knowledge of Elohim in the land that he's given you? You have any love in the land that he's given you? I pray you do because if you don't, the same thing that's happened to Israel here is going to happen to you. Amen? He's no respecter of person, y'all. Hosea 6, 7 says, But they are like men have transgressed the covenant they have, they have their, that, they, there have they dealt treacherously against me. I'm going to read that again. I got a little tongue, tongue tie. Hosea 6, 7. But they like men have transgressed the covenant. There have they dealt treacherously against me. Okay. First of all, this word men here is Adam. And actually, it would be better translated as Adam. They translated it in the King James as men here, but it would be better translated as Adam because Yah is actually making reference to Adam and how he transgressed the covenant, how he transgressed his word. He says, there have they dealt treacherously with me. Now, I want to point out 1 Corinthians 11, 27-31 because we have Pesach coming up. Passover. Amen? Amen. And this is the time when we take the covenant of Yahushua. And a lot of people take this for granted. See, the problem that Yah is saying that he had with his people was that they transgressed the covenant. See, unfortunately, because most people are not knowledgeable of Elohim, they have no knowledge in the land. Yeah. They don't understand that they are in covenant with the Most High and they don't understand when they're transgressing that covenant. Yeah. 
Why don't they understand when they're transgressing that covenant? Because they have no knowledge of Elohim. If you don't have no knowledge of Elohim, then you don't know what his will is for your life. Yeah. You don't know what he wants you to do and what he don't want you to do. Yeah. I was testifying to a brother uh, earlier this week. He was telling me about how he was a good guy and, you know, he know what was right. He knew what was right and what was wrong, and he done the things that was right. And I proceeded to tell him that there's a way that seemeth right unto man that leadeth unto death. That the heart of man is utterly wicked. Who can know it? How dare you tell me that you know what right and wrong is, and you don't know the word? Who determines what right is is the one who made what's right. Who determines what wrong is is the one who who created evil. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen? The creator That's right. determines what's right and wrong for his creation. Yeah. Yes. See, because when he made his creation, he made that creation with some type of boundaries in mind. Yes. There's no one that creates anything and don't have a purpose for what they're creating it for. <laughs> and that purpose for what he's creating it for is the boundaries of that creation. Yeah. In, the, in his intent. For instance, this is carpet. When the creator of the carpet created it, he intended for it to go on the floor and for people to walk on it. Amen? Mm -hmm. It was not his intent that you try to make a house out of carpet. It was not his intent that it was supposed to be a covering for, for, for the ceiling. No. That's not the best example, but you get my point. <laughs> All right, I, I just thought it was nothing. <laughs> the creator of the, of the stove. The creator of the stove and the oven, when he created that, he had the intent of it being used to cook food. He didn't intend for it to heat your house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Not that it couldn't heat your house, but that wasn't what it was intended for. And if you use it to heat your house, it's going to burn out much quicker than if you were just cooking food and using it the way it was intended to. And likewise, when we go and start using our bodies and our wheels for things that we weren't intended to be using them for, mm -hmm. we'll burn out yeah. quicker than what we should have. Yeah. 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 Thank you, y'all. That's a little better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hosea 6, 8, my next reader. 6, 8, and 9. Gilead is a city of them that work iniquity and is polluted with blood. And as troops of robbers wait for a man, so the company of priests murder in the way by consent, for they commit lewdness. Okay. Now, the King James translated it as, as we just, as um, Sister Julie just read. But this is not, a, it's, a, it's a poor translation, so we're going we're gonna, to um, take a look at some of these terms. By consent is actually the word shekel, number 7926. It literally means the neck.